In today's video, I'm setting up an auto top-off unit for the Fluval Evo 13.5. This was well needed because anybody that has a nano tank knows that they evaporate a ton of water. And an auto top-off system is probably the best first upgrade that you can make to a small nano tank like this. So stay till the end to see how this thing turns out and also to find out where you can get your hands on one of these prints and the STL files. And if you like this video or just the content in general with nano reef tanks, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to IC Live. My name is Mark. Jumping straight into this project, this is the ATO unit that I'm going to be putting on the Fluval Evo 13.5. This is an Auto Aqua Smart ATO Lite. And for anybody that watched my last video where I put the ATO unit on the Waterbox Peninsula Mini, I used a different switch. I used the stacked float switch. Now, my understanding is, and we'll figure this out a little later, but that this thing has two sensors, one at the bottom, one at the top. So for your tank to overflow, you would have to have the bottom sensor get activated to turn the pump on, and then the top sensor not sense that the water has gone above that. So as you notice, I've already started opening the box as I've been babbling here. This is what I was looking for. This is the optical sensor right here. So it's magnetically attached to the back of the tank. Also in the box is going to be the pump, the tubing, a few bracket pieces, um, and then the power supply. Here is the optical sensor. Man, this thing is cool. I love the green color. And if you look closely in here, you know, you got the two little pyramids on the front. You can see inside there that there's definitely uh, two switches, so two optical switches. Um, I'm assuming that the top one is to prevent water from overflowing if the bottom one fails. So what I'm going to be making today is a bracket that holds the sensor in place exactly where you want it, and obviously that's going to work in tandem with the magnet going on the outside of the glass. Time to get started with the drawing. <music> Yeah, I don't know what it is either. With the drawing done, I have a general understanding of what I'm gonna be making here. Now, interestingly, I already have a model of a float switch, basically the exact same float switch, because in the past I made a snail guard for one of these float switches. It was actually a request on reef2reef.com where someone was having issues with snails triggering the activation of the ATO unit. So. Not sure if that guard worked out. I don't currently use it. Maybe I'll end up needing it myself. But um, excellent that I don't have to make the general model. I can go ahead and start straight into creating the bracket. So I teleport straight to the print and uh, it turned out decent even though I only have one working printer and as I've said before this GTEC is terrible but this might be workable. Here it is looking we'll just say okay come on zoom in there we go all right got some thick layer lines uh, it actually kind of has a cool little pattern here turned out well let's see uh, if I can get this screw to work here in a second 
So just go ahead and slide this thing in here and it is not the easiest to get the threads to line up, especially because they're not very well printed, but looks like I got it. And uh, yep, it's screwing right in and not quite as snug as the last ones I've made, but this looks good. That's gonna work. Now I get the cord slotted through this little slot here that holds the cord in place, make things look nice and clean, and it is ready to go in the tank. I think it looks great. I had one last thing to print before setting this thing up, and that is the return for the ATO water. I'm using the same model that I used in the Waterbox Peninsula Mini. It's working just fine. It's all cleaned up and ready to go. Here's the close-up. Pretty sweet little thing here, though. Let's see if I can get this vinyl tubing over the top. I think it's gonna work. And with a lot of pressure and very little patience, I finally get the damn thing to fit. There we go. All right, let's get this thing into the tank. The float switch is already installed, so now I'm adding the return to the back here. Uh, I gotta adjust it a little bit, but I eventually get it on. Now I've gotta go ahead and feed everything through and figure out how I'm gonna get power to the switch. But let's speed things up. The float switch is in place. I've got all the wiring along with the tubing fed through. It looks like a mess. Yep, oh, here it is right here. So it goes through the back, then down to the bottom, and that was my terrible cord management you saw up there. And now I've gotta go ahead, get this pump connected, get the reservoir, and then plug everything in. Everything's hooked up and it's running, but I've got some leakage in the back. So now I've got to take those zip ties and I'm gonna wrap some zip ties around the vinyl cord as tight as possible. I should have used tube clamps. I didn't have any available. Actually could have printed one, but this was just me being lazy. I turn it on and voila, it's working. Oh, let's see if there's any leaks and good to go okay last thing to do is to get the ato water reservoir ready i'm going to be doing an ro solution with calc wasser to kind of raise the ph just slightly in the tank i'm only using a half tablespoon per gallon so this is not a very saturated solution you are getting very sleepy very very sleepy you will like and subscribe now Eventually, everything is all complete, so let's check out how it all turned out. Tank's looking pretty decent, and here is the setup in the back. You already saw it, it's working as it's supposed to. And then, as I go down here, let's get the front of this bad boy open. There's my clown. I still got to figure out this door. Here's the ATO reservoir loaded with the calc washer solution. You can see the pump there in the bottom. The tube and the pump heading all the way down. You can see it's kind of milky. It's how Calquasser is. Like I said, it's not a very saturated solution. There's my terrible cord management. Eventually I'll, I'll get around to fixing that up. So I thought this project was done here, but I realized I could have done way better by just combining these two pieces. So that's exactly what I do. And here's what it looks like. Well, that's not what it's supposed to look like. Let's scan another printer fail. I'm printing in PETG and I'm struggling to get it to attach to the build plate. The bottom was good, but it looks like it kind of knocked off at some point. All right, let's try again. Okay, this one's looking promising. So it didn't fall off the build plate. Looks like we got some stringing issues. 
Um, I don't print PETG often, so struggling with it a bit. Got the part all cleaned up, and it's looking pretty good. It's a little bit, it's got some rough spots, but for the most part, layer lines are great. Um, the PETG is very shiny, so it shows the flaws really well. Here's the screw that holds it on the tank, and if you can see the cord slot, where the cord runs through, that's gonna be super cool. Sensor goes right down here in the bottom, and it kind of twists into place. And then right here, I put four little mini holes as siphon brakes. Although the water outlet is right here, which is above the water line, and it shoots it out to the side of the sensor. Time to get this thing installed. I'm testing here to make sure it fits on the glass properly, and it fits great. I just screw in this little screw slightly to make it snug, and it's good to go. All right, now I gotta undo the other sensor and basically swap everything into this one and it all fits great. This looks super cool, the black on green. I love this. All right, there's where the cord goes through. So that's gonna be key, because you cannot see the cord at all. It's completely hidden. Next up is the tube. I've gotta shimmy this thing off the old model and then get it squeezed onto the new one, which is probably not gonna be too easy. It's all done, everything is hooked up. Here's the final result, that looks so clean. Look at how awesome that looks. Tubing going right down. I put on some zip ties to make sure that the water doesn't leak out. And then uh, let's go ahead, here's the top view, but let's give this thing a try. The water level's already where it's supposed to be, so I lift this thing up. There we go, pump got activated, water shoots back in, and I pushed it down. That is it for today's project. This thing is done and it turned out so cool. Now I am gonna make this available and interestingly what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it up so you can have different water level heights. Now the sensor is gonna be stuck at whatever height you choose, but I am gonna make different offsets such as like six inches, eight inches, four inches from the top of the glass. And I'm also gonna set it up to where it accommodates not only the optical sensor, but also the magnetic float switch style. So if you like to get your hands on this model, check out iclive.com. If you shoot me a message, I'll send you the STL files at no cost. Otherwise, you can also buy the printed model from the website. If you like this video and everything that I'm doing here, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you live in the next video.